Okay, hello and welcome. I'm Jason Gumper from msdynamicsworld.com, and we're here for a new session in our Spring 2015 BI and Reporting webcast series. And uh, today I'm really pleased to be able to welcome back uh, to our webcast uh, events Belinda Allen. Belinda is a Dynamics GP MVP. She's also a partner at Smith & Allen Consulting. And uh, as a returning speaker for us, many of you probably know know Belinda already or from other events and other activities and writing she does in the community. Uh, she also has a, a new book that is coming out very soon on Real World BI for Dynamics GP. I'll post a link to that in a, a few moments here. Uh, and beyond GP, uh, Belinda is also a real champion of using Microsoft Excel and Power BI tools. And uh, before we get started, I just do want to take a second to recognize our, our sponsors for BI and Reporting. They are Bioanalytics, DeFacto, Jet Reports, and Solver. Uh, and uh, as we get started here, I do uh, just want to add that we invite you to add uh, your feedback and ask questions today. Uh, Belinda will be saving time at the end for uh, taking your questions, so please feel free to enter those anytime uh, in the Q&A block that you should see to the right of the webcast session here. So uh, without further delay, uh, Belinda, let me hand it off to you. Thank you, Jason. There I go. <laughs> um, welcome, everybody, and thank you for attending today's seminar. So what we're going to do, or webinar, what we're going to do is talk about Power BI and how we can use it as uh, to start out our BI strategy. And we're going to go through the pieces because there's a lot of confusion There's uh, about what Power BI is. BI actually is, and so we'll define all the pieces. We're actually going to dig into it and even look at it a little bit. So let's go ahead and move on. So um, again, our agenda, we've got three big questions we're going to answer today, and the first one is we're going to talk about why everyone does not already have a BI strategy. We're going to talk about uh, what is Power BI and how much it costs. And then lastly, we'll review the three steps we need to create a BI strategy. And I should have time at the end for Q&A. So again, as Jason mentioned, go ahead and type your questions in as they come up, and then we'll take Q&A at the end. Before we begin, I want to share with you my definition of BI so you understand where I'm coming from. BI, or business intelligence, is making informed business decisions based on timely and accurate information. So a BI strategy is all about providing you the means to obtain that timely and accurate information to everyone who needs it. So this brings us to our first topic. Why doesn't every business already have a BI strategy? And based on my 24 years of experience as a GP partner and discussions I've had with other partners and even discussions I've had with my customers and other users, I found there are three main reasons, and I want to talk about these reasons, so let's address them one at a time. Uh, one of the three biggest reasons is some people don't even realize they need it. Now, we've all heard that old saying, what's the last seven words of a dying business? We've always done it that way. Back in the late 90s, our company was implementing GP at a food processing company. And they were taking, uh, we were taking them off of System 36 onto a PC-based network. And for you X-Gens and Y-Gens, uh, System 36 was state-of-the-art computer systems with the black and green screens from the 70s and 80s. We were told they would go live when we could prove that we had accurately built the report that they ran their business by for over 30 years. Now, I spent a couple of weeks building this report, and this was 1996, and tools and systems were very different then, and uh, I couldn't get it to consistently come out right. So I finally sat down with a calculator, and I'm embarrassed to say it took me so long to do this, and I looked at their report, and I found out that the business they had been, the report they'd been running their business on for over 30 years was wrong. Not by much, but it was wrong. It was inconsistently wrong. So this customer of mine thought they had everything they needed in reporting options, and, and they, they had this method of thinking for 30 years that, oh, here's our, our model for reporting, and, and it works. But that kind of thinking no longer works today. I mean, that customer, unfortunately, with that same kind of thinking has since um, gone out of business. 
So to overcome this, we all must become innovators and um, hope our competitors do not follow suit and become innovators, leading us to rise to the top. The second reason, and this is probably the biggest reason that we've seen from customers uh, who have not actively pursuing a BI strategy is they can't make up their mind on what they want to see or how they want to see it or where they want to see it. Another one of my clients who is very forward thinking approached us about five years ago wanting to create a BI strategy. And it was only within the last year that we've been able to start. And that was because for the first four years, they couldn't make up their mind on what they wanted to see. We kept encouraging out-of-the-box features. We kept talking to them about things. We actually wrote things. And they just were so afraid to make a decision because they were afraid that it wouldn't be the right decision. And finally, we were able to convince them that a BI strategy is not a series of reports that are built and done, but rather a group BI strategy is something that changes and evolves constantly. And since we started that strategy, they've had their, their BI strategy growing and growing, and they, they've benefited from it a, a great deal. Now, I'm going to talk about how the strategy grows a little bit later uh, in the session. And the final big reason is budget constraints. Now, today I'm going to show you Microsoft Power BI, and it's a low-cost solution that provides really high value. So whether you just use Power BI as a starter for your BI strategy and then move to another tool, or you implement Power BI and keep it, uh, either way, you're going to be able to get value right away. It's an easy-to-use tool. It's easy to read, and it provides a lot of very beneficial information that can aid you in making decisions that are going to improve the success of your business. Now, this is um, the February 2015 Gardner Group Magic Quadrant Report for BI and analytics. And if you're not familiar with Gartner Group, they are the world's leading information technology research and advisory company, and they're based out of Stanford, Connecticut. And the goal is, for all companies is to be in the magic quadrant, which is the top right box. The higher you are, the better your ability to execute. And the farther to the right you go, the more your completeness of vision. And so as you can see, Microsoft, they've only been out with Power BI for two years, and for the second year in a row, they are resting in the magic quadrant with a couple really big, expensive leaders. And according to the Gartner Group's research, users of Microsoft Power BI are saying it's the low cost of ownership and the low license costs that remain the biggest reason that they're using that particular tool. So even two years out of the box, Microsoft has already established itself as a leader in the BI industry. So what is Power BI and what does it cost? And I get this question a lot, what is Power BI? Because there are so many elements, and some of them have the same name, so it's confusing. It's kind of like sailing. When I learned to sail, it took me a while because the word tack has like three different meanings. And so Power BI has something similar. So let's see if we can't clear up some of that confusion. So what we're going to do is define uh, some of the definitions. And then we're going to chart it out and talk about pricing. And then after pricing, we'll look we'll at the products in action. So Microsoft Power BI is a collection of on-prem and online tools and services that enable you to find and visualize data. You could share your discoveries and then collaborate in entirely new ways. So it is not necessarily a single product, but it is a collection of tools and services that are both on-prem, on your own machines, on your own networks, and online. And the, uh, the current way of the Power BI is utilizing Office 365 and uh, and some on-prem Excel tools. And we're going to be looking specifically at the Excel tools, although most of them will work with SQL Server um, directly using SSIS. Now, um, so even if you're not an Office 365 person, you could still utilize a lot of this 
this Power BI within Office 365, but there is a new way. And right now it's in preview, and it is Azure-based, and we're going to look at that, and, uh, and we'll actually do a live demo of that. I just have screenshots and a couple of videos of the other ones. And we'll review each of these as, um, as we work through the charting out of all the tools so you can get a feel for them. Now, I want to pause for a moment and, and ask the question, do we want 32-bit or 64-bit of Excel? Because this is a question a lot of people don't ask. And the reason why they don't ask is if you go to any kind of expert or source, they're going to tell you that 32-bit is the recommended uh, way because it works better with third-party add-ons. But I say if you're going to use Excel for any kind of reporting for your ERP or CRM data, you're going to need 64-bit. 32-bit uh, is limited to 2 gigabytes of virtual office space, so it has to run entirely in that 2 gigabyte limit, where the 64-bit version is limited only by the available memory and system resources. Now, um, I have some clients that Excel would lock up when they were using GP because the 32-bit limitations. But once we moved them to 64-bit version of Excel, it eliminated the freezing and allowed them to use Excel as a tool. Now, if you use Office 365 and you download it, you do have to go into the settings, to the advanced settings, to install the 64-bit. I do want to point that out. So let's start by looking at the current Power BI for Office 365 and the Excel on-prem tools. The first tool we'll discuss is one that's been around the longest, and that tool is Power Pivot. And Power Pivot's main feature is that it creates an in-memory data model. And by using a data model, the pivot table feature in Excel can be used accessing hundreds of millions of rows of data. With performance. The data model removes the constraint of the Excel rows and column limits. And by virtue of being a data model, you can create hierarchies for your data and customize fields and formulas. You can even link to multiple data sources, allowing these data sources to appear on a single pivot table. And this is something that you cannot do in Excel out of the box. Now, this is uh, an on-prem tool. This is available for both versions. And even if you don't get the full features, a lot of these Excel tools, um, or all these Excel tools are available for you to use. Next is my favorite tool, and that's Power Query. And with Power Query, you can discover data and extract data from a large variety of sources, including, but not limited to, web pages, SQL databases, OData feeds, Azure, Hadoop, Exchange, plus a whole lot more. Uh, you can also merge and append data with multiple sources and shape and cleanse the data. And finally, you can opt to simply create a connection for Excel or and put the data in Excel or load the data to the data model in Power Pivot. Again, using the data model removes the constraints of the Excel row limits. One, uh, one of the things I love the most about Power Query is that when you use it in combination with Office 365, uh, you can create queries and make them available for other other users that are part of your Power BI. And it's a great way for, uh, for team members to get data without diving into a SQL database. Next up is Power View. And Power View is a dashboard-like tool that sits in an Excel spreadsheet that allows you to interactively explore and visualize and present data. This data can be presented in charts and graphs, so it's easy to learn and to use. Power View can use data from Excel, Power Query, um, or the, and or the Power Pivot data model. And then finally, we have Power Maps. And Power Map is also considered in preview, even though it's been out a couple years. And Power Map is a 3D visual tool that uses Bing Maps to help you tell a story about your data. So anytime you have data that has geography in it, like sales with the addresses of customers, you can use it to tell the data. And all of these tools, except Power Map, can be loaded up to the Office 365 Power Tool. 
So these are all tools in the Power 365 category, or in the Power Tool category, or Power BI category, uh, but they're all Excel-based. So why is so Excel so important to BI? Um, this is something I've heard, and I found it really interesting. Excel is the third most commonly used button, or most common button to appear on BI tools or other BI applications. So I say, why not start in Excel? And by the way, the two most common buttons are OK and cancel. So again, I say, if Excel's that important, why not just start in Excel? Okay, so now let's talk about the Office 360 or the uh, Power BI, the Office 365 Power BI tools, the ones that do not reside in Excel. And we'll start uh, with the Power BI app. And this is a SharePoint Online-based site that allows you to analyze and explore data and reports. You can publish reports from Excel, including Power View and Power Query that we just discussed, and then next is my favorite tool, and I mentioned this already, with Power Query, you can share queries and you can even report on the usage of these queries. So if you're an IT person, you can see which queries are being used and how much they're being used, and that even helps you to determine if you need to explore into new areas. And then this brings us to the Q&A. I still consider this one of the most jaw-dropping tools that Microsoft has come out with. It provides BI users with the ability to ask questions in natural language, just like we do in Bing, about published reports in Power BI. And then the results of these questions are charts, graphs, and tables. And I will give you a demonstration of Q&A um, when we do our live demonstration. OK, so let's talk about the Office 365 Power Tools with the Power BI app. So how is it, um, whoop, let me switch over to the screen. So how is it all working? So um, oops, let me go back, sorry. Lost my train of thought here. Okay, so we have, these are all the apps from the website. Oh, and the last one, I'm sorry, I did not mention. That is, I knew there was something else I was gonna say. Finally, we have the Windows 8 app. and. It's, uh, unfortunately, it's not available on the phone uh, yet. It's only available for the uh, pa uh, PCs and tablets for Windows 8 machine. But it provides you a dashboard of the visualizations from the Power BI site. So anything that you deem a favorite in the Power BI site in Office 365 will appear on your Windows 8 Power BI app. There are some other admin tools available, but we're not going to take a look at those today. We're just going to look at basically some of the user-facing tools. Okay, so now we want to talk about the new Power BI uh, dashboarding tool. So they've re-engineered it all together so it's no longer SharePoint-based. Now it is Azure-based, and it's really more, much more of a dashboarding tool than anything else. And it's really groundbreaking. Uh, because it's it's so much of an entry level tool, and in five minutes you can create a personal dashboard with the Q and A that I've already talked about. The first time it was presented to me, the presentation was called Five Minutes to Wow, and I was literally wowed so that I stole that same name and gave that presentation again, Five Minutes to Wow, because I think it's that amazing. So let's dig into how much this costs. And this is a question that everyone wants to answer, what's it going to cost me? So let's take a look at the pricing for these two options separately. OK, and uh, so let's start with pricing for the Excel tools. OK, so but part of the pricing I'm going to talk about is which version you're on. Because if you don't have a current version, part of the pricing is you do have to get a, a supported version. Now I don't. I want to start with pivot tables. Don't undermine how amazing pivot tables still are and how much of an active part of Power BI they still are. And Excel versions 2010, 2013, Office 365. So um, pivot tables have been around a while. I just mentioned some. This, I'm just dealing with supported versions. Um, they're incredibly powerful. For the Power BI pivot, Power Pivot, and the Power BI um, Power query. They work pretty much the same. So both of those will run in Excel 2010. Uh, or if you're in 2013, you need the Office Professional Plus or um, 
Excel standalone. So uh, you can see there's more specific information on the versions listed there. For 2010, both the Power Pivot and the Power Query need to be downloaded from Microsoft and installed as an Excel add-in. For 2013, Power Query is already an add-in, or Power Pivot is already an add-in, so you need to download Power Query and install that as your add-in. The other two tools, Power View and Power Map, um, again, they work in Excel standalone 2013. They're only available in 2013. Or Office Professional Plus 2013, or Office 365 Professional Plus, or Office 365 Enterprise. Power Maps is also available for home and office business. Power View comes installed already with your 2013. You may need to turn it on uh, in the trust um, add-ons, but Power Map you do need to download. As I mentioned, it is also um, still considered preview. So how much are these tools provided that you're on the right version of Excel? They're free. Yep. You have access to a ton of Power BI tools free already. It's just a matter of making sure you're on the right version and you need to be on a supported version of Excel anyhow, and downloading them if they're not already installed. So the current version of Power BI for Office 365, it's good news. Microsoft has dropped the pricing since they have now come out with a new version that's in preview. So to get it, if you have Office 365, you do need to have an E3 or E4 subscription. And it is $9.99 a user a month if you have one of those subscriptions. And they do bill you annually. If you do not have one of those subscriptions, you can purchase it for $17.99 a month user. And uh, with that, you get uh, SharePoint Online Plan E2, and that includes some extra things, but we're not talking about SharePoint today. So, um, so you would get a little bit extra with that as well. Now, I do want to point out uh, volume licensing is available. And uh, as I mentioned, the SharePoint um, Plan 2 is included with that. Now, they are trans transitioning, as I mentioned. So eventually, the SharePoint version will disappear. And we will only have this newer version. And so I can always share pricing information with you as it is now. I will make sure that um, Jared has to upload on the site the slide deck so you could have this link. But if you uh, just go out and look up Power BI, you get some information on the transitioning itself. So how much do these cost? There are two versions. One's free. One's $9.99 a month per user. And these are billed annually as well. And that's it. That's really inexpensive. That is by far one of the least expensive BI solutions I've seen out there, and especially for what it does. So let's talk about some uh, capacity with these pricing. So some of the big things are like data capacity limits. Uh, with the uh, free version, you only get a gigabyte a user, but you do get 10 gigabytes a user with the paid for version. There are apps available out there. They come free. You get it with it, regardless of which one you're using. And then some of the other limitations are the uh, frequency in which the data will refresh. So in the free version, it's only daily, and uh, it's, only, uh, it's hourly in the professional version. And then there's some streaming differences there. So I do want to mention that. And if you do want to connect to some some of your data directly and have it uh, feed directly and you need to do that via a gateway, then it is available with the pro version as well. Here's a couple more features. Um, there's shareable. And one of the big things, if you look at the last option here, this is one that I absolutely love again. It is my Power Query. So again, you get the ability to share your queries through a data catalog. And by sharing them through the data catalog, then you can make them available to other people who have Power BI. And you can, again, look at analytics and see what they are charging for those. All right. So let's take a look at some live examples and demos of how we can 
see Power BI in action and how it can add value to you. And we'll not be looking at examples of all the tools. Some of them we're just going to look at screenshots due to time constraints. Because I get so excited, I'll just run way over. So um, the screenshot, though, and just talking about it should give you uh, a, the idea of how it works. OK, so this is what you've been waiting for. So open your mouth wide. I'm getting ready to turn off the fire hose. And uh, we're going to touch each one of these. But uh, keep in mind, this session uh, in, is less about training and more about understanding what Power BI can do. So we're going to have to move quickly, as we have been doing. OK, Power Query. Um, I'm not bringing it up first because it is my favorite, and I've told you that about four times already. I'm showing it first because this is a great method of accessing the data you want and preparing the data for reporting. This is an extraction tool. Um, it really is an ETL tool, an extraction transform loading, because you can extract the data from somewhere, you can transform it, and then you load it into the data model. So what we're going to do is, because I would talk way too long, is I'm going to play this video and then, whoops, that's the wrong video. So let me stop it. Let me pull up the right video. That's funny, I did that. OK. So here's the right video. Yeah, let me make it full screen. OK. And give it a second here, and it will color in for us. Usually takes my screen a few seconds to color in. I'm on a surface. And let me try it one more time. I may have to give you a live one. There we go. OK. So you can see I have Power Query on my add-ins at the top of Excel. And from the Power Query window, I can get my data sources. I have a large variety, including SharePoint list, Hadoop, Active Directory, Facebook. Uh, I can get from data from all sorts of Azure sites, including Azure Marketplace, if you're familiar with that. Then there are a large variety of SQL databases. So this is not just for my SQL Server. Then I could get it from files, things like Excel, a CVS file. So if I get a file from somewhere else, there are also some websites. I could search Wikipedia sites or any kind of uh, query I've pre-created. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to New York City's open data site. And I'm getting a link that would download a CVS file. So what I'm going to do in my Power Query is I'm going to go and tell it I want it to pull data from a particular website. And I will paste that link in. And go ahead and click OK. And then it will pull up my Power Query editor. And from here, I will clean up my data. And if you can't see what it's doing, that's OK, because I've sped up the clip to 400% anyhow, so it'd be hard to follow. But I'm editing out columns I don't want. I'm changing column names. I'm changing the column, setting some from um, text to numbers and so forth. Um, I'm filtering out some of the rows to get things I do not want. So I'm basically scrubbing my data. This is where I would also merge data if I had data from multiple data sets or append data. And what I just showed you is this uses the language called M. M is for mashup. And, and so it has its own language. So eventually, you'll be able to go in and do some things with an M. Now, what's also really cool about Power Query, for those of you who are looking at the service-based architecture in uh, GP 2015, is you can get to service-based architecture information. You could query GP using that, those tools as well. So that's pretty cool. So that's a little bit about Power Query. It is pretty darn cool. Once it's in Excel, you could either dump it in Excel or you could dump it into the data model. In this case, I have it in both. And that warning message you saw was, since I put it in Excel first, it was letting me know that if I had made any changes in Excel, they would be written over. I would lose them. So that is a little bit about Power Query. And we could look at it more. Um, later on as we go through. So let me get back on track with my slide deck. I changed my Power Map slide. That means my Power Map video is going to be wrong as well. So I'll have to pull it up separately. OK. So Power Pivot is where the data in the data model resides. Now, it's actually just floating in memory. But this is where we manage the data model. And the best use for Power Pivot, in my opinion, is the data model. Some people will bring things into Power Pivot 
and uh, in the data model, and then they'll use Power Pivot to add formulas and fields. And you could do that using the language called DAX, Data Analysis Expression. Uh, it's much more similar to Excel formulas than uh, M, so it's much easier to use. And that's what Power Pivot is powerful for. And then that brings us to Power Map. And Power Map, again, is that 3D visualization tool. And let me go just go back and play that power map again. OK, so here is one of the things you could do with power map. Once you create the power map is that you could, in Excel, you could save it as a video. And that's what this is, the final results of my um, accident data that I used in Power Query. So I extracted it in Power Query and put it in the data model. And then now I've created a visualization of the tra traffic accidents in New York City. So I could see on a map where these accidents occurred and, uh, and, and the cause of those accidents, if I was so inclined. Let's flip back. We're not going to look at that video. That shows how I did it. All right. So then that brings us to Power View. And again, um, Power View is similar in its dashboarding abilities to the new Power BI. And I'm going to show you a live demo of the new Power BI so you'll get an idea of how Power View works. But it's a great tool to use uh, for if you want to give to someone and they just need to do their own little queries within it, um, it's, it's a nice dashboard. It's refreshable. And it's easy for users to add and remove filters. So this is a great use of Power View. Now, the current Power BI in Office 365, this is just a screenshot of it. And you can see you upload reports. And you can see an image of the report itself. And uh, it also includes Power Q&A, and when we look at the new Power BI, I'll, I'll give you a demo of the Q&A there. Now, again, this stores all the reports in SharePoint Online. So even if you get a subscription as a standalone, you're still going to use the SharePoint Online and upload your reports. And this is a great tool for executives and salespeople who do not have, nor do they want, access to GP, but they still need access from GP. And it's not restricted to just be. GP, none of these are. You could use them for any of your data as you move along. If you use that, you can download and use the free Power Windows 8 Power BI app. And again, this just pulls up individual visualizations of all your favorited reports. And um, it's very similar to how the Power B, the new Power BI looks. I think they realized this was kind of the route people wanted to go. And one of the things I do like about this is if you bring in an Excel report that has a table and a, a pivot table and a table, a pivot chart and a pivot table, it will bring both of those over individually if you mark them so that you can focus on them individually, which I think is pretty cool. So now. Uh, for the Power BI preview. Uh, this is meant to be a place to bring all of your data together so you can focus on what's important and you can always be in the know. And it is built on Azure, as I mentioned. You do not have to have Azure or use Azure to utilize it. Uh, you just go to powerbi.com and access it. And it has the amazing Q&A module where you can ask those natural language questions and get answers. And the only prep work you need to do for Power Q&A is you need to upload an Excel table. So you have to have a table there. And you just need to make sure the column names of each table are the same kind of names a user would use when they're typing in their questions. So no more custom or you know, um, whatever, or anything weird like that. You, you just put in customer number or customer or customer ID and let that be part of the natural language. Um, then you can also get this um, available on an iPad. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to show be able to show it to you today. Um, I, I had intended to. and had other networking issues, so was it, I'm not able to show it to you today, but it looks the same, so uh, you can play with that. I do encourage you to download. If you have an iPad, you can download it for free and play with it, and uh, I do encourage you to do that. So let's take a live look at Power BI. All right, so what I'm going to do, pull up the right website.
Okay, I might have to stop my There we go. All right, give me a second. Sorry. There we go. So this is PowerBI.com. If you go to PowerBI.com and log in, this is what you would end up seeing. And this is a blank slate. I deliberately started with a blank slate because I want you to see how cool this is and how powerful this is. Okay, so what we're going to do is go and get our data. And what I'm going to do right now is just pull up an Excel worksheet. You can see there are a lot of predefined options out there. And since this is uh, for Dynamics folks, you can see it's really cool. We have Dynamics CRM, Dynamics Marketing, um, there's Salesforce out there. Uh, they do encourage you to tell them what other data connections you would like to be pre-made. So if you have some ideas of what you'd like to see, by all means, go and do that. Okay, so I'm going to get it from an Excel table. Let me try it again. Oh, there we go. All right, so hmm. I got weird stuff happening. Let me sit back. Okay. So I want an Excel workbook, and I'm going to connect, and I'll browse out to my Excel folder. So under Documents, MS Dynamics World, and let's see, Excel files. So I've got my sales data out here, and I'm going to connect. And it's actually uploading my data. And now it's telling me my dashboard is ready. So let me just come up to here. Here's my dashboard. So you can see it has my table on it. And what I want to do first, though, is create some visualizations for this dashboard. So I'm just going to click on it. And you can see I have my fields over here. And some of them have the sum sign so that I can tell that's a number. And some have a map that indicates that this is a geography-based field. So I'm going to drag out city. And it creates a map visualization. You can see it puts it in my location already. I'm going to go ahead and drag out country as well. And then let me go and find state. And I'll just put this in the middle. And then what I'm going to do right now is showing me line item sequence stuff. I don't want to see that. So let's go and grab gross margin. And this is uh, an Excel data that I used uh, off of a view. So I, can, I created this table off of you, so it's refreshable. So it would be easy for me to populate it back. Now, I just want to focus on things that are occurring in the US and Canada. So I'm going to come in and do a filter. Just click right here. And I'm going to put the filter just on the map. And I'm going to come into the country and say, I just want Canada and the US. And I will go back to fields. And so now I have this visual representation of my gross margins in the US. And I could uh, you know, move around to make it bigger and so forth. So let's add a couple other ones. Let's come in and let's find item class. So let's drag that out here. And then let's find uh, quantity. And I'm going to drag it down here and get rid of that item sequence number again. So now I have a visualization for my quantity. And if I want to change the visualization, it's pretty easy. I can click right here and select a different kind of chart if I was so inclined, a different kind of way to see the data. So you can see this is very simple to do. So let's create two more. I'm going to drag item class out. I want to have two with item class. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and drag out two of them. So I have item class in for both. And now what I'm going to do is come down here, and I'm going to put, we'll put total cost to that one. Get rid of line item sequence. It looks for a value to place in. And then on this one, I'll just click over there. And now I'm going to place total price over here. And so now I have one for the total price by item class and the total cost by customer class. Now, I'm sitting here realizing those two are very similar. So maybe I want to see that data combined. So I'm going to take this data, and I'm going to drag it on top of this one, and I'm going to let go. And now it's going to turn it into a scatter chart. Let's make this bigger. 
And let's change that visualization. I'm not a big scatter chart person. Let's do a stacked bar. And then that way, we have, whoops, got them backwards. We have our cost on the bottom, and we have the total price at the top. So everything that's left in pink is gross margin. So now we have three very nice visualizations. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and so we'll call it SOP for sales order processing, uh, for those of you who may not be GP people. And I like all of these, so I'm going to because I want them to be part of my dashboard. So you can see there's a so when I go back to Power BI just by clicking on it at the top, now under Dashboard, I can see my visualizations that I can move around, and I can see my table. Now this is where, this line right here, ask a question about the data on the dashboard. This is where we ask a question. So I could say, show me, gro show gross margin by state. And now I can see gross margin by state. And if I wanted to to salesperson, I could just type in salesperson. And now it's changed by salesperson. And this is something I might be interested in a lot, so I'm going to just to my dashboard as well. So when I go back to the dashboard, here is my gross margin by salesperson. So you can see this is very simple to do and uh, unbelievably powerful. And again, anything I place in here would then be available on my iPad as well. Let me do a quick check on time to see about adding another element. So I'm going to add one more element to it. Um, I'm going to add something in that typically that is not part of my GP data. But in, our, in this GP data land, we sell phones. So I want to add some information about cell phones um, avail that are available. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to go to this particular website. This is a cool site, gapminder.org, that has a lot of data values in it. And I'm going to click on data. And I'm going to tell it what data I want to search for. I'm looking for cell phones. So here's a cell phone by 100 person, cell phone by total uh, from the World Bank by year. So that one looks good. I'm going to right mouse click. And this is what I did in that video. And I'm going to choose copy the shortcut, because I want to just copy the shortcut to Excel so it becomes uh, refreshable. I'm going to close that out. And I'm going to utilize another tool here. This tool is the Power BI Designer. It's a free download, so you can go ahead and download it and then start playing with it locally on your own machine. So I'm going to get the data from, oops, not from Excel. I'm going to get the data from a website. And this particular Power BI piece uses Power Query as its backbone. So when I click on that, it's actually working in Power Query, and I'm going to tell it I want the data section. I happen to know which one it is, but if you highlight those, you'll see a preview here. And I'm going to tell it I want to edit the data so I could look at it before I load it, because maybe I need to clip some. First of all, I want to change it from the word data to cell phones by country. And I can see I have a couple cleanup things I need to do. First of all, I need to make the first row column, so that's, that's done. Then I notice that this is in a pivot table structure, which is going to be very difficult to report on. So I'm going to unpivot all those columns just by highlighting them, right mouse and choosing unpivot columns. And now they're unpivoted, so I just need to change the names of my columns. So we have country. We have year, and we have the uh, cell phones. That's actually the number of cell phones. Now I also want to go through and make both of these number fields, whole number fields, so that it knows to add these up, the cell phone, or cell, number of cell phones. Now you see I have a lot with zeros, because obviously nobody had a cell phone in 65. The technology wasn't around. So what I want to do is come in and do a number filter, and I'm going to say, is greater than 1 million. 
Notice this looks very similar to Excel. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now you can see I have all that information applied. And again, it shows, it tracks all the steps of everything I did. So if I come and click back on navigation up here, I'm going to see it as I pulled it down. So anytime anything goes through Power Query, it'll follow all of these steps. Now that I'm done, I'll simply click on um, Report. And then I'm in the Power BI Designer. And it's loading my report or my data to the designer. So now it's trying to create a sheet for me, but um, it's getting ready for me there. So what I want to do now is drag all of this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag out country. And it'll start creating some information for me here. Oops, bad call, because I do not want it to be in a graph. Let's drag out year. All right, so now we have a chart, something we can work with. That's awesome. So in the access, let's put in country. And so oh, we have that year in value. Let's put sales in value and get rid of year. Let's put year in, let me move this up and put year into the legend. Come on, year into the legend. There we go. OK, so now we have the year in the legend. So we can see all of the countries. Um, oh, that did not put it in the legend. Let's try it one more time. There we go. There we go. OK, so now we see all of them in the legend. So this is a bit junky. We've got a lot going on here. Again, we're since we've been looking at just the US and Canada, perhaps that's something we want to filter on. So let's go back to filters here. And we can filter for the whole page or just this chart. Let's filter for the whole page. There you go. Let's go into country. And we can filter to just the US and Canada. Actually, it would probably be easier if I did it under query. So let's go under query. We'll click here. Let's tell it to load more so we get the whole list. Unselect all and find Canada and the United States. All right, back to our report. And it's reloading our report. And you can see our report looks very different. I don't particularly like that graph. So let's change it to a line. Like the way that looks, that's pretty cool. All right, so now that we have all that done, this is something I'm happy with. So I am going to just save this report. So I'll just do a save. And we'll call this Phones 2. All right. So I'm going to close that out. So now back in my Power BI, another way I can get data is from the Power BI designer. And I will connect to a designer and choose my designer file. OK, so my data is now out here. And if I come back in and put it to the dashboard, now I will have that chart on my dashboard as well. Let's go back. Hello. There it is. OK. So now we can see we've added that new data. So these are completely different data sources. Every, everything but this came from SQL Server, and this came from a public site. And because this was done through query, it does become a bit, it becomes refreshable as well. So they're working on how some of these things refresh. GP does not refresh directly here. Right now, you would have to upload the table. So, um, but Microsoft is actively working on that. Let's minimize that and go back to our slide deck. Because I do want to talk about the three steps, and believe it or not, this is very fast, about the three steps to create a BI strategy. There are only three steps, yes, and they're very easy. First and foremost, you have to define 
what your critical success criteria is. And this really isn't as hard as it seems. If you're a hotel, it's renting rooms and making profits. If you're a restaurant, it's covers and making profit. If you're a retailer, it's selling products and making profit. If you're a not-for-profit, it's obtaining donations and grants and spending less or equal to what you bring in. If you're a membership organization, it's, it's new adding members and making profits. You see how this goes. So define what makes your company a success. Sometimes it can be as simple as how money comes in and trying to increase that, along with how money goes out and trying to decrease that. The second step is to determine how you measure these success criteria. So if you're a hotel, it's the number of rooms you rent and the profit you make per room. If it's a restaurant, it's the number of covers you make and the profit you make per cover. And it goes on, comparing these. Define what makes your company a success and decide how you measure it. Now, this should be fairly obvious, but this is the starting point. This is where you begin your BI strategy. If you use a tool that allows for easy changes and create an environment where changes are encouraged, your BR will start to evolve and it will become valuable information. And that's the whole point behind the way this Power BI or the way Microsoft sees this Power BI working. They see one person starting to use it and sharing information, and that creating need to create more information and share more information. And instead of a team rolling in and saying, here's what you need in BI, let's build it, it becomes something that's viral and something that's living and breathing. And our last step is repeating step one and two over and over again, all the way down to every level of our company. So if you were an online retailer, think about how much profit could be increased if your shipping people had a BI tool that helped them determine the least expensive method of shipping. If you were a distributor with salespeople, imagine how effective you could make a salesperson and the bottom line by providing them customer and product information uh, that's current and refreshable so they know where their larger profits are. And these sound obvious, but the use of BI tools rather than printed and email reports can increase efficiency in dramatic ways. Not all businesses need to take BI to the line level employee. But don't rule it out. Last Christmas, I purchased my mother-in-law a pressure washer, and I went to the Home Depot with a specific one in mind. And the person who assisted me was able to tell me that um, they were out, but they also told me the exact store location that had the model I wanted. Now, was I happy I had to go to another store? No. But I was happy that I knew exactly where to go. And they didn't have to go somewhere and look it up. They didn't have to call someone. They had a handheld device right there, and they were able to help me. And that left me thinking, that was a good experience I had. I'm going to definitely return to that store. So as we wrap all this up and bring it to q and I, I want to ask you uh, or leave you with a challenge. So uh, first, I'm wondering if you've ever heard of the thinking of the whale ship named Essex. It's a true story, and it's what Herman Melville used to write the book Moby Dick. It's also um, the story of a fascinating book by Nathaniel Philbrook called In the Heart of the Sea, and uh, they just made it into a movie, which is scheduled to release this, Chris this Christmas, uh, starring Chris Hemsworth, so I have two reasons to see it. It's a great story, and <laughs> uh, Chris Hemsworth. But I, I read the book when it uh, first came out, and I was fascinated by it. And one of the things that really stuck out with me the most on that story, I started thinking about in terms of BI. And I'm not really giving anything away. Uh, a whale sinks a whale ship. So there were 19 people who boarded this whale ship in Nantucket in August of 1819. And after um, being at sea from August 1819 until uh, November, 1820, yes, over a year at sea, a whale crashed into the boat and completely tore it up and um, causing it to sink. Now, all of the crew members, all 19 of them, were able to get into uh, the boats they used to harvest the whales, which were like very small sailboats, and they got into it with provisions, fresh water and some food. Now, they knew where they were at the time of the attack, so they knew they were only about two weeks from the Isle of Marquesa. 
and they were many, 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 many weeks away from the coast of South America. And yet, they had enough food for two weeks to get to Marquesa, and yet they still decided to go to the coast of South America, knowing that they that some of them at least would perish, if not all of them. Now, why didn't they go the distance of the two weeks? Because they believed that island to be inhabited by cannibals, and they were afraid that they would be captured, killed, and eaten. Now, that being the case, they went the other way. And when they finally were found, some 90 days later, all three boats, there were three boats, they had separated. And two of the boats were found, and of the ones that were found, only five survivors. And the only reason those people survived, because they began to eat the remains of those that had died before them. One boat had started doing that early enough that everyone got healthy. So when nobody else had died and they were out of bodies, they started drawing straws to see who would be shot and, uh, and eaten. And so it was terrible. So fear of cannibalism drew them to cannibalism. Now, what was really interesting was some years earlier, before that happened, missionaries had arrived to that island and so to the Marquesa Island. So had they gone there, they would probably not have been killed and eaten. They would have been nurtured and um, assisted on their way back home. But they made the best choice they could based on the information they had available to them at the time. So I challenge you to open yourself up and your business up to new methods of reporting. Don't make decisions based on what you just have available to you at the time. Uh, a couple things I do want to point out, and I, it looks like we might not have that much time for sharing. Uh, there is a new blog out for analytics that I'm a part of. Uh, it's a part run by Microsoft MSDN blog called Women in Analytics. Um, you can see I was excited. I had the very uh, the third blog that was posted there, so um, I encourage you to take part of that. And again, as um, Jason mentioned, Mark Polino and I collaborated and have this book called Real World Business Intelligence with Microsoft Dynamics GP, where we walk you through step by step building reports using several of the tools we just mentioned, and uh, so it fits nicely with today. It's, uh, it can be pre-ordered now. Uh, it'll be out next month. So I'm super excited about that. And that brings me to Q&A time. Did we have any um, cues, Jason? Uh, we do. We have a couple. And I would invite folks okay. to enter their questions now while we still have a couple minutes. Uh, so one got back to the pricing question. If I have a paid subscription mm -hmm. to Power BI and share um, with users who are on the free version, will the data refresh hourly or daily? If you're on the paid version, no, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be done. That's a really good question. I think it's always gonna be done based on whatever version somebody has. And you, uh, if you if you share, if you're on a paid version and you share with them, the only way you're gonna be able to share with them is through the Power BI designer or the Power BI. Um, or, or an Excel sheet. So you're not going to be able to share your queries with anybody um, or reporting with anybody that's not part of your company's system. So you're not going to be, I, I believe. That's a really good question. You know, I don't know the, you know what, I'm going to stand with, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to write that down right now and I will, um, I'm on the uh, data platform advisor team, so I have access to some of the people who do the development on this, and I'll ask them and see if they know. So, okay, All what's right. the next question? Uh, the next one is, uh, well, one that we get pretty frequently um, asking about how people can uh, get access to this presentation afterwards. We are recording it. And we will okay. be making it available uh, on our site and on our YouTube channel. So, we'll, and we'll be sending out a notification to everyone who registered uh, when that is available in the next day or two. Uh, we don't have any other questions right now, so I'll make a, a final call for questions if anyone has one. Um, you know, again, all of uh, Belinda's contact information is right there, and uh, definitely recommend checking out her blog and, and all the great videos she's done uh, over time on using GP and uh, in Excel and Power BI. And uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. Belinda, thanks so much for uh, taking the time today. 
thank you, Jared. I appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone who's taken the time to uh, to attend today. And uh, for that question, I will make sure Jared has the answer so he can post it with the um, post it with the link. Uh, Belinda, we actually did have one final question that came in, if you have a moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, so regarding actually having Power BI work directly with GP, um, do you have any ideas of when that might come or when that might uh, evolve or change? Um, I do. I do not. Uh, that's unfortunately the the handling of that is up to Microsoft Office, believe it or not, the Microsoft Office team. The Microsoft GP team is waiting on the Microsoft Office team to complete something. So I have been begging for um, the ability to do uh, something similar with OData feeds um, for a little over a year. I harass the GP team on a regular basis about it. Um, I heard one person, and I'm not going to say who it was, say they um, they thought it would be by the end of the year, but I heard someone else say they thought that first person was being a little bit optimistic. So I'm not really sure which one uh, or when it will be out, but I know they are working on it as fast and furiously as they can. So um, I, you will know it because I will be standing on top of the Empire State Building screaming it at the top of my lungs that it's finally here, it's finally here, um, because I, I look forward to it. But, you know, my thought is when you're looking at BI, I mean, depending on exactly what it is you're looking at, for a lot of the sales kind of information like this that you're shell, sell, or show, sharing with executives and managers, more, for more businesses than not, yesterday is real. So if you get it and upload that Excel file and let all the other reports refresh off, it, off of it automatically, then that is usually sufficient enough. Um, there are some businesses where sales is different, and part of the BI, importance of BI is what's happening you know, in the last two minutes or the last 30 minutes, and that would definitely be a different story. But for most GP users, yesterday is real time enough, and it's not that big of a hassle in the interim to to upload. Um, I'm a GP user, too, so I'm saying that as someone who would have to upload it. But I think the value you get out of it is, is tremendous. And um, I one of the things I haven't done yet that I, I really want to do is experiment with utilizing some of these Excel BI tools in Business Analyzer. And again, Business Analyzer, um, if any of you are non-GP people, if you're AX or NAV people, then uh, this would benefit you as well, because I know the Business Analyzer has been being rolled out or has been rolled out to everyone. So um, I want to play with that and see how that works. And um, that might make it a little more refreshable uh, sooner. So I, I wish I had an answer. I wish I could say a specific date. but. Um, I have a feeling they won't even give, tell me that with a non-disclosure because they probably think I won't be able to keep my mouth shut, and they're probably right. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Likewise, we'll, we'll definitely be watching for those kinds of announcements coming mm -hmm. up uh, uh, with with great interest. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you very much, Belinda. That does look like the last question. Folks, do look for a quick survey that pops up when you leave. We really appreciate the feedback. Our speakers do as well. It should only take about 30 seconds to fill out. With that, uh, we will conclude today's session. Uh, it has been recorded. We thank you for your time. Uh, Belinda, thanks again. Thank you. And, uh, and have a great day.